Hello and welcome to EGM 702 Photogrammetry and Advanced Image Analysis, Week 2, Part 1, DEM Accuracy and Analysis. In this week's lectures, we're going to be talking about DEMs and their different applications. We'll talk about uh, DEM accuracy and analysis in this lecture, followed by topographic analysis, some spatial statistics, principles and applications of LIDAR, where you can go to find DEMs for your own work, and finally, different applications of DEMs. So to start with, we should probably define what a DEM is. And the acronym DEM stands for, if you weren't already aware, Digital Elevation Model. So this is a typically a raster data set where the values inside of the raster represent elevation. But what elevation are we talking about? We have different flavors of DEMs. We might have a digital surface model where we have the ground surface as well as the surface of anything on top of the ground, such as trees or buildings or so on. Um, when we're working with optical data, such as the air photos that you worked with last week, this is primarily what we're going to be generating. We might also use a digital terrain model, and this is where the elevation values represent the actual ground. So we've removed the trees, the buildings, anything built up on top of the ground, and we're just looking at the, the surface of the earth. We also have different considerations to, to work with. We might have different data sources. Like I said, if we're working with air photos, we're going to be generating surface models. If we're working with LIDAR, we might be working with, we might be generating terrain models. So again, depending on what data we're using, we're going to have different surfaces that we end up working with. We might also need different, or we might also have different applications for our DEMs. And so we need to consider what our applications are before we start trying to find the data. We might also ask ourselves what does the elevation actually represent because sometimes when we go out and we get a DEM from somewhere the values are going to be tied to the orthometric height or the height above some geoid model. Um, we might also, uh, especially with satellite derived data, we might get values that are tied to some height above an ellipsoid model, commonly WGS84. So these are things to keep in mind as well when we're, when we're working with our DEMs. So for error and accuracy analysis, we have a couple of things that we need to think about. The first is that we have two main categories of error. We have random error which is typically related to image issues, so inability to, uh, to do correlation in our air photos, as one good example, um, ends, uh, ends up introducing random errors into the final elevation product. You might have seen this with some noise and DEMs that you generated last week. We might also have to do with parallax matching, resolution, the acquisition geometry, all of these can contribute to the random errors. This is not typically something that we can correct. It's not something that we can really model uh, because again, it's, it's a random thing. It's something that we can just sort of characterize and hope that it's not too overpowering. This mostly affects the precision and we'll talk about what that means on the next slide. We also have systematic errors. These are errors that um, are also called bias. So this is where we have our values somehow shifted in a, in a universal or more maybe more local way away from our ground tooth or our actual uh, elevation data. These are more related to the external orientation of our images or our sensors. Um, these are things that we can also model and correct um, because they are, they are based on some physical aspect of the of the system that we can work with. These also mostly affect the accuracy. So I've used two words now that we should stop and define and discuss accuracy and precision. So 
a definition that we'll use for accuracy is how close a particular measurement comes to a standard or known value. And precision is how close two or, me two or more measurements are. So if we look at our different targets here, we have some darts that we've thrown at the center, um, and we have some different clusterings of those, um, of those throws that we're going to try to analyze for both accuracy and precision. So if we look at our first set of darts up here, you see that they all come fairly close to the center. So they're fairly close to the target or the standard or known value that we're aiming for. So we would say that these are fairly accurate. You notice though that they're not very tightly clustered. We see a lot of spread in the data. So even though they all come fairly close to the center, they're not very precise. We're not very sure how, how close we can actually get to the target based on what we've thrown here. So we would say these are not precise. The next group, we do see that there's some precision. They're fairly tightly clustered, but they're, never, they're very far off of what the actual target was. So we would say these are not accurate, but they are precise. And then our last group here, we see that we've both come to the center of the target, and we also have a fairly tight, small cluster around the center of the target. So we would say that these are both accurate and precise. To actually measure the internal accuracy, or to actually measure the accuracy of our DEMs, we have a couple of ways that we can go about this. The first is what's called the internal accuracy. And this is something that we're estimating only from the calibration and the orientation. So these are things like uh, what we, after, after we've put our control points into our images, we might try to hold back some points from the bundle adjustment. And the result of that would tell us how far away from the expected location this, pic this particular ground control point is uh, that you can see. Um, denoted by the orange circle here. So this, this is a way for us to help make sure that the, uh, that the camera parameters, that the orientation and the calibration that we're computing is accurate by, using, by, by seeing how points that are not used in the actual calibration actually um, are located within this, within this final system. Uh, we might also just use the bundle adjustment residuals. So a lot of you would have seen after the Campari step in the previous in the uh, week one practical, um, you can look at the different GCP locations, how far away they are, and that tells you something about the internal accuracy of the system. We might also be interested in estimating the external accuracy. So this is where we have independent validation or validating our DEM against some external elevation source. And this can be a lot of different, uh, we, we can get this from a lot of different places. So we might find some high quality DEMs uh, that we trust or that we know the, uh, the actual accuracy and precision of. We might have GPS measurements that we've made in the field in our study area. Uh, we might have access to LIDAR data, which is usually of a very high quality uh, we might also compare it to ISAT, and we'll talk a little bit more about what ISAT is uh, later in the, in the lectures this week. Um, so the example that's shown here is comparing the AirPhoto DEM that I generated for this week's practical to the AW3D30, which is the ALOS, um, the ALOS PRISM 30 meter global DEM. <laughs> that's kind of a mouthful there, but that's, so that's a, a, a global DEM that has a fairly high quality, is fairly highly accurate uh, on a global scale, and I've compared our DEM to that, and what I get is about a seven and a half meter difference uh, to the ALOS DEMs. We can also use the derived parameters from the DEM. So for example, we can compare things like the slope or the curvature. We might look at the watersheds that we generate from the DEM, and that can give us a sense of the accuracy as well. We'll talk a little bit about statistics in the lectures this week. So we want to start off a little bit on some common ground. So often what we are using to describe data sets is the mean, often depicted as the symbol mu, 
and the standard deviation also depicted as this lowercase sigma. So we use these to describe our data. Now these descriptions are usually built on the assumption that our data are normally distributed. That is to say that they follow some Gaussian distribution that you can see here. So we see that we have a peak that is centered on the mean value or mu. And then we have some different, um, some different lines here that denote the spread within one standard deviation of the mean. So this is where about 67% of our data fall if we have a normally distributed data set. Uh, within two standard deviations of the mean, we have about 95% of our data, again, if we're following a normal distribution. And within three standard deviations of the mean, we have 99% of our data. So again, this is the assumption that we're using when we start um, when we start describing our data set or our differences uh, using the mean and the standard deviation. The problem that we often run into is that this is often not the case for DEMs, and especially when comparing different DEMs. We don't often follow this normal distribution. Uh, you can see here the differences uh, between two high-quality DEMs, uh, and they agree uh, there's a, a mean difference here of zero. But if we were to characterize this as a normal distribution, you can see that the, the calculated normal distribution is much wider than the actual spread of the data. So if we use the standard deviation, we're actually underestimating how accurate or how precise our data set is. So this is something that we need to, to think about and be careful of when we're dealing with elevations. So that is to say, other measures that we might use are more useful. So instead of the mean and standard deviation, we might use something like the median so the 50th percentile of the data set. This is usually a little bit more resilient to large outliers in the data. It's not as affected by these large outliers, so this is something that we might prefer to use over the mean. Another example of a statistic and its sort of corresponding uh, Gaussian uh, metric is uh, the normalized median absolute deviation, or the NMAD. And this is sort of a, a proxy for the standard deviation. We might also want to use the quantiles of the data set, so the 68th percentile, the 95th percentile, to compare to the, to the Gaussian uh, metrics that we might be more familiar with. Um, so the nice thing about these different metrics is that they are less sensitive to large outliers, as I've said, which is another way of saying that they are robust against outliers. And in fact, if you see this plot here from this paper that I've included for this week's reading, um, you can see the, um, the different distributions calculated using all of the statistics after kicking out some of the outliers and then using these robust metrics. And you see the robust metrics have a much closer, uh, they, they come much closer to the data set um, than the other than the, than the not robust or the less robust uh, metrics. Okay, so to sum all of this up, uh, DEMs might represent different surfaces, and this is important uh, that we keep this in mind. Uh, we know that accuracy and precision are both impacted for different reasons um, that we've discussed in this lecture. Uh, to evaluate DEMs, we can use either external or internal metrics, which is to say with or without independent data. Um, and we need to keep statistics in mind because the mean and standard deviation that we are very familiar with are usually or not always the most appropriate measures to use when we're comparing elevation data. Okay, so there's a few different papers here that I'd like to that I'd like you to have a look at. The first is, uh, this paper from last year by Polidori and Alhaga uh, in remote sensing, and this is a, a good overview of accuracy analysis of DEMs. Um, there's another paper from uh, 2009 by Hürle and Hürle, uh, which looks at specifically using robust metrics to, um, to estimate the accuracy of DEMs. And then there's a couple of other uh, papers here that you can have a look at.
um, that go into some more detail about accuracy, um, accuracy estimation of different DEM data sets. Okay, that's all I have for this lesson. I hope you found it interesting, and if you have any questions, please post them in the discussion board on Blackboard. Thanks. Bye.